Okay, I think this slide will last time in the wrong order, but never mind. So, just to finish off with the layout tidy up. Uh, after translated text has been reflowed into the layout, it's not really good. So, as a, as a very small example now, if we imagine a button, next button, on the website, presentation, or something like that. If we simply translate that automatically with an engineering process where we flow the text in, uh, in this case Spanish, the Spanish translation is too long for the background for the button. So someone then, once the text has been put back in, has to tidy up the layout, either increase the size of the background image to uh, fill out the button or shrink the text so the button fits. So the text fits the button. So. So when the file engineering or manual extraction is used, then layout tidy up is always required. Uh, and I'd suggest that even on something as simple as a word file, even if it's a simple letter format or uh, a report or something like that, it's still always worth checking. Uh, now I don't know how skillful project managers are to do that. Sometimes. Uh, project managers might feel comfortable in tidying up a word file themselves. Um, you know, that's up to you really on, on how comfortable you are feel, to feel to do it. But um, if not, then uh, you know, DTP is uh, recommended. So now let's look at the client again asking for this mysterious file package to be localised. So the client sends a bunch of files. You may not know what these files are, you may not have a clue what's going on. Uh, but again, the client asks to localize. So now you open up the package, you have a look inside, and the first question you need to ask is what are you actually attempting to localize? Now within the file package, there may be various categories, well there is various categories of files. What you need to do is establish exactly what types of files are what. So, three categories that I've uh, put down here. First of all, in the middle, files to be localised. This is the target, this is what we're aiming to put into different languages. This might not be every single file in the, in the package, it might just be one file, for instance a PDF. Um, it's important to work out first of all what that file is, what, what it is that the client's expecting back. Sometimes they might send the wrong files or out of date files. So establishing this is crucial really to as a starting point to proceed. Uh, now if it's a file as an example, uh, a PDF, then that will have been created from something like a Word file or an InDesign file or some of the layout software. So in this case, the PDF would be the file to localize, the Word file would be the construction file. And if the client knows a little bit about what they want, <coughs> they may have some instructions already, in which case they might provide it within the files as a separate text file. So you have to be careful not to send all the files for engineering or for a word count because you might end up having too many. Um, so I just that. And does everybody know um, how to, if the client doesn't know the source file, how to find it out from the PDF file? Oh, it's properties. Oh, you get the properties there in the control D properties. Yeah, okay. Right. Just make sure everyone knows. I think I should have that clear there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's on your reason. Okay, so let's go through some uh, file types now. Office, I'm presuming, is the files you're probably most familiar with and localise the most frequent. Um, the basic, or the, the most common files within Office are Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Uh, the current version of Office and the, and the previous one now save documents as docx, whereas before that it was doc 
uh, excellence. And as with all software, it's important to establish the uh, current version or the version that the client would like. Um, and also with the people that you're going to be working with, whether it's a typesetter or uh, you know, whoever, then making sure that the right version of software is used is uh, important. Um, there were situations where the client sends some files from Office 2003 or something and we look and Globalingo localizes it, sends it back in Office 2010 and can't open it. That's basic error. So establishing the version is always important. Um, now with Word and Office and uh, sorry, Word <coughs> and PowerPoint files, then generally speaking, extraction reflow is fully automated. Uh, I'm sure you've probably got your own processes for processing uh, Word, Excel and PowerPoint. Um, so yeah, fully automated. And if the design is a complex one, sometimes people use Word to create the most amazing uh, documents for print. It's not really designed for that. Office files are for, for Office documents really for simple letters, uh, text-based reports, things like that. Um, so if someone has used Word to design something amazing, then be aware there may be graphics in there as well. It's not just fancy documents that are done in design and other professional software that might have uneditable text inside. So when you're checking the file, make sure that you check through and check if there's any graphics that contain text. Obviously, you'll be able to tell if the graphic contains text or not uh, if you can't edit the actual text in the, in the Word file. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I've got a client that sends through um, reports in Word um, mm -hmm. for translation but they use up to 15 different style sheets within a Word file um, because they have certain style guidelines that they've got to adhere to. They're an engineering company. Um, and what I found is that Trigos just plays havoc with them and the style sheets never stay the same, things shift, um, and they're so pedantic it has to match the source exactly. Um, so our usual process would be to translate that using translation memory um, and pre-process the file using translation memory. And then it would just undergo our usual, um, what we call a, a QA check. So the project manager would reformat it as per the source. But the problem we've been having is that we've not been getting it exact, although it might to the naked eye look okay from his perspective. He's a, you know, he knows his style sheets inside out and they're not exact. So in that kind of scenario, is that best to send to a typeset to do or? So when you say the style sheets are not exact, um, Travis seems to tamper with them. Okay. Um, it depends, I guess, on the engineering process. You're going to have to focus on that first, really. Mm -hmm. um, if things are changing, uh, you need to work out if it was an error in the automation uh, process or if it was actually Trados. And if it's Trados, there's not really much you can do other than fix the files afterwards. The last result would be to manually extract everything. Uh, or at least translate the content and then manually insert it back in again. Mm -hmm. And then, as you say, tidy it up and, and fix it manually. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, there's a, if there is a way to automate and, f and solve the problem with the automation, then that would, of course, make more sense and uh, be the first option if mm -hmm. you can. Yeah. You could also perhaps look at the templates themselves and work out if it's something that 
can be changed with them, but again, then maybe crossing the line even as far as the client is concerned to modify those templates or those style sheets. Mm -hmm. um, but perhaps there's some um, leeway there. Okay. I do yeah. actually have some templates um, from the client that he sent to me. He's locked all the styles. Um, he thought that might work, um, but I still seem to have loads of, of trouble with them. Um, mm -hmm. What I might do is um, send them across to you to take a look. <coughs> See if you've got any ideas. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like it's more of an engineering problem than mm -hmm. a type setting problem, but yeah, I mean, I can at least work out uh, you know, how, they're, how they're done and I can uh, talk to my engineer and see if he's got any suggestions for yeah. the trials. Okay, cool. Okay, so yeah.